Today I'm going to show you how to make a super delicious spicy lentil and tomato soup. It's so flavorful. It is perfect for meal prep. It is high in protein, it's low in calories, it's filling, it's budget friendly, and it is going to be full of flavor. You definitely want to try this. Let's get started. Welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another recipe video. Today, we are still in soup season, in cozy season, so we're gonna make a soup. We're gonna meal prep a soup because I want to eat the soup every day for like a week because I want my life to be easy, as always. So we're gonna make a spicy lentil and tomato soup. I'm gonna make it super filling, super flavorful, super affordable because we are using very affordable ingredients and we're also making it spicy because I'm Korean, it's in my blood, okay? I eat spicy food. I like spicy food. But if you don't like spicy food, I'll give you some options as to what you can do to not make it spicy. Anyway, that's what we're gonna do today. As always, the written recipe is gonna be linked below. It's gonna be on my blog, and if you do enjoy this recipe, make sure you head on over to the blog, scroll down to the recipe card, and give me a five-star review because those help me a lot. And of course, give this video a big thumbs up and then I'll love you forever. But before we jump into this video, I just want to let you guys know that I'm hosting another trip to Bali this year, guys. I went to Bali last year with some of you guys and I had such a great time that we are doing it again this year, but this time it's even better than last year's because we learned a lot from the last trip. We had a great time, but we wanted to make it even better this time, so we did. It's gonna be so fun. It's going to be a vegan food tour in Bali for a week. We're gonna spend a week together getting to know each other, spending time together, becoming friends. We're gonna eat delicious vegan food in Bali because if you did not know, Bali has a lot of vegan food and a lot of awesome vegan restaurants are actually included as part of the itinerary and we're also doing some really fun activities like going to the monkey forest, yeah. We're also gonna do a Balinese cooking class. These are activities we did last year and it was so fun, so of course we had to include them this year. We're gonna go to a waterfall, we're gonna go to an organic farm. I mean, it's gonna be so much fun. So if you guys want to come along with me on a vegan food tour in Bali, then definitely check out the link down below to book your spot. You guys, there are limited spots and many of my trips sell out, so make sure you don't miss out. You don't have to pay the full price right away. You can just pay 25% for now and secure your spot. So yeah, these trips are super fun and we are gonna become the best of friends. So if you guys wanna come along on a trip with me, again, check out Bali. The link is down below. You can click that for all the information and to book now. So hopefully I'll see you in Bali. Now let's get started with this recipe. All right, friends, so first I've got a pot here, it has been heating, it has been warming up. So in here, we're going to add some oil. Let's grease up this bad boy. You can use any sort of big pot, big Dutch oven, whatever. So into our lovely pot, we're gonna add some onion. I have some diced onion here. We're gonna add that in. We're also gonna add some minced garlic. And I know I mentioned this in like every single video where I use garlic, but if you wanna check out my garlic hack, so you can always have minced garlic available, I'll link that hack video below. So we're gonna add some minced garlic, and we're also gonna add some celery, carrot. Again, all of this is diced, okay? I've already done the work, my friends. And if you're feeling lazy, just stick it all into like a food processor to dice your veggies. That's a little hack. We're also gonna add in some diced bell pepper, and of course, because we're making this spicy, we're gonna add in some jalapeno. I have seeded this and I've diced it. My fingers are slightly burning, okay, because of the spice from this jalapeno. So if you don't want it spicy, skip the jalapeno, okay? So I'm just going to let these vegetables cook for like a couple of minutes. This is a flavor bomb of veggies, my friends. It is smelling nice and fragrant, very strong. So if you were actually making this, yourself at this point while you're cooking up these veggies you can actually prepare the rest of the ingredients so you don't have to prepare it all at the same time like i'm doing because obviously this is you know i am a professional you know what i'm saying so if you're not doing a youtube video if you're not making you know content you can just do this part and while this is cooking up you can like prepare some other stuff you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying we are cooking up the lovely veggies and i think we're you know, I think we're ready. It's, it's very fragrant. Okay, we're ready to move on. Next, what we wanna do is add some tomato paste, okay? Concentrated. 
I like to add this because it's really gonna give a concentration of flavor. We're just gonna kind of mix this, let it kind of coat everything here, just a minute or so like this. And now we're gonna add some potatoes. So I have here some peeled and cubed potatoes. I cut the potato into like smaller sort of pieces. I'm gonna add that in here. Potatoes are fantastic. It's a really, really healthy carbohydrate, my friends. And it's one of the most satiating foods in the world. In fact, okay, they did a satiety test and potatoes of a bunch of different foods and potatoes came number one, my friends. It is a number one on the satiety scale. Potatoes have a really bad rep for whatever reason, and I'm like, girl, potatoes are so good for you. So this is gonna help us feel fuller. It's gonna be a really good carbohydrate source. I mean, it's just great. Potatoes are fantastic. Okay, fantastic. Next is gonna be our large can of diced tomatoes, okay? If you don't have a large can, you can use two small cans. Okay, you can also do like stewed tomatoes, you know, whatever you want. Next, I have our lentils. We're using green lentils for this. You can either use brown or green. I feel like they do the same thing. You can even do red split lentils and it's gonna take a shorter time to cook and maybe a little less broth. I actually like green or brown lentils a bit better, but I often use red split lentils because they don't take as much time to cook. So we're gonna add the lentils in here and they are dry. We're cooking from scratch. And now we're gonna add in vegetable broth. Now I have water, okay, because well, I'll show you. Okay, so I'm gonna add water, AKA vegetable broth, because we're gonna add some veggie bouillon cubes, okay? This is going to make the water into vegetable broth. I never buy veggie broth because it's like, I never use it all and then it goes bad. But another option is to make your own veggie broth, which I really like doing as well. Now, if you use your own veggie broth or if you use a really low sodium veggie broth, you may have to adjust the seasonings, add some salt and pepper, add, you know, add more seasonings, okay? To make it more, you know, flavorful. You don't want this to be bland, okay? Nobody likes bland food. Well, some people like bland food. I don't like bland food. So we've added the veggie bouillon cubes. That's basically a huge concentration of flavor. I love me a veggie bouillon cube. So add that in there um, or use whatever vegetable broth. And then I'm gonna add in some smoked paprika. You could also just use regular paprika. You can just skip this and add a different spice if you want, but I'm doing smoked paprika. I love smoked paprika. It gives a really nice flavor and I just love it. And I'm also gonna add in some Italian seasoning. Now Italian seasoning is basically just a mixture of seasonings that I guess Italians use. So I don't know. You can also just do a mixture of like dry basil and uh, parsley and oregano, like stuff like that, you know? But for me, just having the Italian seasoning on hand is really, really helpful because then I can just, you know, have the Italian seasoning. I don't have to like have different seasonings. Anyway, so now that we've added that in, I'm just gonna give it a good mix. We're gonna cover this up and we're gonna bring it to a boil. So we have it on high heat. We're gonna bring this to a boil and once it boils, we can turn it down and let it simmer and let the flavors make love in the pot and then we'll check back on it. Okay, so let's cover it up. Let's bring this to a boil. All right, guys. Ooh. So, look at this, it is boiling, lovely. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to let this simmer now. For, I wanna say like 30 to 40 minutes, we're gonna simmer it on low for some time to allow the flavors to make love. So I'm gonna cover her up again. We're gonna turn the heat to a low and we're gonna let the flavors make love in here and then we're gonna check back on it. And we're gonna have one final step and then of course we're gonna have to taste it, but it's smelling so good. All right guys, so I actually let this cook for 40 minutes and it's looking nice and lovely. Basically you wanna cook this until the lentils have become really nice and tender and just cook through, okay? So look at this, guys, look at this, okay? So we're almost done. All we have to do now is add, one of my favorite things to add to a soup at the end of the soup process is some lemon juice, okay? Um, fresh lemon juice would be better, but you know what? I just use store-bought. Now what the lemon juice does is it really enhances the flavor. It brings out the flavor, and it's a great way to add additional flavor without adding a ton of salt. So I love adding it at the very end here to really enhance that flavor. It's gonna give it a little taste. Maybe I need some more lemon juice. Mmm, I think it's perfect. It's so good. Really brings out that flavor. And because I'm Korean, as I said, and I like a lot of spice. 
I'm actually gonna add in some crushed chili flakes because to me, it's not giving super spicy, okay? To other people, maybe, but for me, I could add a little bit more, a little bit more spice, okay? So I'm just gonna add some crushed pepper flakes. Again, that part is totally optional. And at this point, you can also add in any sort of herbs that you like and whatever else you wanna add. Oh, another thing that I would probably like to add at the end here, if I had some, is something like baby spinach or chopped kale. At the very end, when you're still simmering a little bit, throw that in there and just, just, just stir it a few times and then it'll wilt and that way you can add some greens into your soup as well if that's what you wanted. So there you go, you guys. That's how you make it. Now, let's actually give it a true taste test. Alright guys, here's the soup. It's ready to eat. I'm so excited and let's just dig in. Let's just dig in. Cheers. Mm. Mm. This is bursting with flavor. So much flavor. I can taste that smoked paprika coming through. I highly recommend if you like smoked paprika to use smoked paprika because it adds so much extra flavor. And there's so many different flavors throughout this dish. I can taste a lemoniness, just a little bit, just a hint of lemoniness. I can taste, oh, hold on. Mm. My friends, this is so good, okay? I could literally eat this every single day and probably for the next week or so, I'll probably be eating this every single day. <laughs> mm, you guys, this is so good. So guys, that was the spicy lentil and tomato soup. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. I love it so much. I think this is gonna be a staple. It's so easy to make. It's so budget friendly. It's so healthy. We're dealing with whole foods, plant-based ingredients here, my friends. So much goodness in one bowl of soup and it's easy to meal prep. You can also freeze this as well. Keep it in the fridge for the next few days and eat it throughout the week. Whatever you want, okay? It is so good and I promise you, you will love it as well. And as I mentioned, the recipe will be linked below. It's gonna be on my blog, so check out the recipe it has all of the measurements and everything and all the details so if you enjoy the recipe make sure you scroll down to the bottom of the recipe and get to the recipe card and leave me a five star review because those help me a lot and of course guys make sure you give this video a big thumbs up make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and once again don't forget to check out my upcoming trip to bali if you want to come with me to bali and have a grand old time discussing random topics going to see waterfalls and monkeys and going to a balinese cooking class and all of these fun things make sure you check out the link below to the bali trip it'll give you all the details and you can also book using that link as well thank you guys so much for watching make sure you subscribe if you haven't already did I mention that? I don't know. Either way, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!